An Introduction to the Alexander Technique by Ophir Mizrahi Chapter 1 Share Work Ready? Here we go! Learning while seated is always accompanied by the use of mirrors and the photograph of a skeleton. From the very first lesson, we confront those habits of ours which direct us erroneously. We learn how to think in ways to free the neck. Following this, we discover the proper relationship between head, neck, and back. Ophir's left hand, placed under the chin, leads the chin forward, as his right hand leads upward and make certain the proper head-neck-back relationship is maintained throughout the entire movement. The chair serves as a stimulus for sitting and standing and enables us to check our reactions as we face a mirror. Here, we allow the neck to be free. The head leads forward and upward, and when the head leads, the body follows. The minute stops during the movements are intended to reunite the line of thought with the activity being currently performed. In an experiential process, hidden from the eye of the observer, Interplay occurs between Ophir and the student, both on psychological and mechanical levels, during which the blocking of routine reactions provides a basis for work rich in discovery. In this pause, initiated by Ophir, you can see how the back becomes longer and wider. Each unit of the back is kept constant and calm. The hips, knees, and ankles are the only joints which are active during the movement. Ophir guides the student to avoid unnecessary tightness, to reduce muscle strain, and to attain expansion rather than compression throughout the exercise. Thus, Throughout sitting and rising, she breathes freely. Her neck is free, and her head leads forward and upward. In this way, we return that inborn vitality which accompanies both little children as they move their bodies and all vertebrates in nature whose heads guide their movement. One important aspect of working with a chair is the heightening of awareness of the present and the creation of thinking up. Throughout our work, we take care that students do not do the opposite, pulling him or herself downward or sinking into lethargy. Here you can see how Ophir sends the student a tactile message which emphasizes the proper relationship between head, neck, and back. The tactile message is absorbed into the student's body through the nervous system, and the mind inscribes a new record of what is happening within the body. Every time the neck stiffens, or whenever the head-neck-back relationship is distorted, it is a sign that we have lost the line of thought with those essential and central processes in our existence, and we stop the move. When awareness is not present in the body, force of habit guides our existence. 
like a numbing drug. It limits our ability to devote ourselves fully and dynamically to the act we desire to perform. Sitting and rising, ostensibly an external process, are in reality much more. They encourage an alert countenance, a vital presence in our bodies. It invites interest in and happiness from simple life processes and acquaints us with the experience of unity of body and thought while calm and aware. Chapter 2 Table Work the main portion of this lesson is devoted to work on a table. When the back is supine, the neural system is calm and our powers of discernment are heightened with respect to processes taking place within our bodies. Here we can see how the student allows her neck to be free as Ophir moves her head. The objective of working on a table is to vividly experience the power of non-activity and directional guidance. These concepts are the foundation rock of the technique and they receive new significance as we advance from lesson to lesson. Chapter 3 Squatting. Note how little children kneel easily and effortlessly. This is exactly what we learn in this lesson. Without stretching, without pressure, without calisthenics or standing on your head, we return to ourselves that inborn quality which disappeared through the years. Chapter 4 Hands on the Back of the Chair you can see how we connect with the sitting bones. Sitting just a few millimeters forward or behind these bones imposes superfluous burdens expressed by discomfort and agitation. Following this, we learn how to lessen muscle strain and use the hands without overworking joints and back. All this is done while maintaining awareness of the proper relationship between head, neck, and back. Note how the hands move effortlessly. Placement of the hands on the back of the chair teaches us how to cope easily with all the daily activities such as writing, holding a child, operating a computer, playing various musical instruments, and so on. You can detect the separations we create between joints and organs. Thus, joints are not compressed. This is preventative medicine in all its glory. Chapter 5 Whispered Ah You have undoubtedly heard about the floating ribs. When their natural functioning is unimpeded, they truly can float. The whispered ah connects us indirectly to breathing mechanisms. We begin by bringing presence and thought to a smiling countenance, 
softening the facial muscles, revealing the two rows of teeth, and, assisted by the tongue, moving the lower jaw forward and downward. Breath is exhaled with a special whisper. To see additional film clips and study the display from Ophir Mizrahi's book, please enter our home site www.ofirmiz.com.